vaccination. Even the word makes some people cringe. There's been few more divisive topics in the last three years than getting a vaccination. But did you know that there's a vaccine that can prevent cancer? Now, I use the word divisive and not controversial because there is no controversy in the study populations for every given vaccination. The benefits vastly outweigh the risks, even though there are some notable risks for vaccination in certain groups. So stick around if you want to know how to save lives with a single vaccination series. So there is an HPV vaccine that's been around for 18 years with over 60 million women benefiting. HPV or human papilloma virus is a infectious virus that is transmitted through sexual contact. There are over 100 different subtypes of the virus and they're all numbered. But 70% of all cancers caused by two, the 16 and 18 serotype. As much as 90% of certain types of genital warts are caused by the 6 and 11 HPV type. And in one large study, there was a 90% reduction in cervical cancer in vaccinated women compared to unvaccinated. So who's eligible for the vaccine and when did they get it? So the original trial data for FDA approval was studied on patients aged 9 through 26. And that's the recommended age range for receiving and starting the vaccination protocol, which is one dose, then two months later, then a third dose, six months after the initial. The ideal age range to start the vaccination is recommended at age 11 or 12, and this is recommended for both women and men. The primary risk reduction is cervical cancer and genital warts. Although HPV can also cause cancer of the vulva, the vagina, the anus, the penis, and even the throat. Now, these cancers are far less common, but you would still get that benefit and risk reduction, which is why it's also recommended for men. Now, keep in mind, the vaccine is a preventative strategy. Your body develops immune response, and if you are exposed to HPV, it prevents your body from being infected and developing warts and cancer. Now, that being said, if a patient has had abnormal PAPs or has had genital warts in the past, they can still receive benefit from the vaccine because the original vaccine prevents uh, four different types, 6, 11, 16, and 18. And the most recently updated version actually prevents uh, infection from nine most common. So it's actually increased from the four most common to the nine most common uh, HPD infections. As if preventing cervical cancer weren't a good enough reason by itself to get the vaccine, it also prevents the development of genital warts, which are just fleshy outgrowths of irregular tissue from the vulvar and vaginal area, which can be painful, rarely turn into cancer, and are clearly aesthetically unappealing and can certainly have other consequences, including avoidance of sexual activity, embarrassment, depression. So if you don't get the vaccine or you do get the vaccine and you have a rare strain that causes warts that aren't protected by the vaccine, what are the treatments? There are several major treatments. One is an actual topical ointment that over a long period of time can reduce the number and size of the lesions. It can be, have a very erosive effect on normal skin and normal tissue, so it has to be very delicately, precisely applied just to the lesion itself. And then there's actual surgical treatments, which can include laser treatment, freezing, or in some cases for extensive lesions actually require surgical removal of part or all of the vulvar tissue performed in an operating room. And even though the vaccine has this amazing, impactful overall effect in risk reduction, it is not a substitute for healthcare screening. You still need to go and be evaluated by your physician on an annual basis and have PAP testing as required for your age group. Also, safe sex practices, and although condoms cannot completely prevent the transmission of HPV, HIV, HSV or other infections, it's the best strategy we have to reduce the risk of transmission. On this channel, our goal is to provide evidence-based education and information for as many patients as we can. Also, we'd love to hear from you. Drop your questions in the comment section below 
and tell us what you'd like to hear as the next topic.